Itio munbora minra heoda, eoroerum fast in a nyafila dristiestreona. I am guardian of my flock, made fast with wire, filled within of the people's treasure. Often during the day I spit spear terrors, success is greater by means of my plenty. The master beholds it, how defensive darts fly from my belly. At times I begin to swallow dark, dusky war weapons, bitter points, hateful poison spears. My inside is good, beautiful womb horde, proud creatures. Men remember what travels through my mouth. It is remarkable to note that it is only within the past decade or so that we have been able to claim that we have a satisfying solution to Riddle 17 of the Exeter book. Since the Codex's first publication in 1842, scholars have made multiple attempts, many offering up solutions such as ballista, weapons rack, and even the anachronistic visored helmet. But each one failed to satisfy, like a jigsaw puzzle piece that just didn't fit. It wasn't until Mary Jane Osborne made her argument in 2005 that the world had a solution that seemed to work. A beehive. Like any other form of literature, the riddles of the Exeter book were created in context, and a great part of that context is the material culture of Anglo-Saxon England. Even more specifically, what meaning can a book of such mixed content have, especially within the medieval community where we first have record of it? We know it was donated to Exeter Cathedral by its first bishop, Leofrich, but why would a bishop value a book that mixed the profane with the sacred? My dissertation proposes to examine the Exeter book as a whole, and the way it calls on material goods and their relationships with Anglo-Saxons to create meaning and reflect the values of the culture that produced it. Well, before surviving codices of Anglo-Saxon poetry, so that is to say the Junius Manuscript and the Vercelli book and the Knoll Codex and, of course, the Exeter book, the first two are really concerned mostly with religious topics. The third, the Null Codex, is where we find Beowulf and Judith, but we also find other texts there, so like the Wonders of the East, which are not poetic. It's really only in the Exeter book that we find a good mix of both the spiritual and the secular in a poetic context. And as a student of material culture, it really makes more sense for me to focus on areas where I have not only poetry that is concerned with the world to come, but also the poetry that is concerned with the here and now. So when I see hagiography next to elegies, next to riddles, that's the text that I want to focus on. My investigation will begin with the evaluation of the Exeter book itself as a product of material culture. I will then shift my focus to the texts within, examining religious poetry in the form of narratives such as hagiographies, Guthlac, and Juliana, and non-hagiographic texts like Christ and the Descent into Hell. I will then turn to non-narrative religious poetry that often seeks to provide philosophical or spiritual advice, such as the whale, the panther, and vainglory. From there, I will turn to the riddles and the numerous objects each poem represents. My final examination will focus on the remaining secular poetry of the book, including the elegies and the catalog like Weed Seeth. Each reference to a material item will be examined with respect to the archaeological record and historical context, providing a clearer view of the relationships Anglo-Saxons had with the objects that shared their world.